Hey Track Gang, what's going on in this week's episode of the Beauville Newtown? Well, it's right over here. Stand by and we'll get into what's happening this week. Hello Track Gang and welcome to episode 20 for 2024, happens to be July 20th of 2024, um, and <laughs> today I embarked on something that is obviously taking me longer, of course, everything takes longer than you expect. A um, couple of things real quick because I want to call something out. There is, for those that are on Facebook, and I know that there are a few, um, there is a page for the Fitchburg uh, Narrow Gauge Railroad, uh, Model Railroad, um, I think is what the name of the page actually is. Um, but, at any rate, I was, of course, the Sidetrack Sunday Gang kind of already know what I've been working on. Um, but I've been working on the hill. Um, there's two things here that I want to bring up, actually, and I, that's where I was headed originally before I sidetracked myself. Um, and that is that he had brought up, or was doing something that I was like, you know what, that's actually a better idea than what I had for the hill. But my issue is, um, this hill is very thin. Um at least the front, the face of it, the hill itself is fairly deep. I mean, we're talking uh, four to six inches deep overall. Okay, it's deeper than that, it's seven and a half inches. So the flat part is seven inches. The face is like an inch, inch and a half at best. Um, but what he had done is made rock molds and had put rock molds in and then actually did something very similar that what I did down with the the uh, wall uh, outside of Beauville Yard, which was make block and block that are blocked around the um, the stone outcroppings looked really good. This scene, though, I don't think is going to lend itself to that, um, namely because of the fact that the molds that I have, some of them are on the thicker side. The, the thinner ones are really short, they're really small, they're, they're maybe an inch and a half long, inch, inch and a half long at most. Um, and they're, it would take an awful, awful, awful lot of them to fill the space that I need to fill over here. And I'm not sure if I really want to take that undertaking. I have an idea for a backup plan, and that would be to actually just mix up some plaster, which I've got, and just smear it on the face of the foam and cut into it to make it look like rock. Um, again, I've never done anything like that and I don't know how hard it's going to be to do, but I'm going to look into the, that possibility. I've got to do something with this. The original plan was to put trees across this and make it look like the edge of a forest. There was a, uh, in one of the, um, I don't know if it was in one of the Dream Plan builds. I think it was in one of the Dream Plan builds. It was either that or one of the older uh, model uh, modeling uh, model or model railroading with the experts. Um, and I think it was Dave Frary that actually it may have been Dave. Somebody had mentioned, you know, when you have a sheer cliff, making the edge of forest effect. Again, I think what he had for his edge of forest was a little bit deeper. It was probably two to three inches deep. So you could put up twigs and then put lichen on top of it and make it look like an edge of a forest. This isn't going to work that way. Um, I actually toyed with that the other night. I actually had some thinner trees and I was going to line them. But the more I looked at it, I'm like, I'm not sure that that's going to work. Eventually, I'm going to need to get some trees. For this, I don't, I don't, I still don't know what I'm going to do with it. Anyway, what I decided to do while I was contemplating what to do with the rock wall or the face 
of the um, of this was one of those <laughs> one of those odd things um, where I decided to put the church and there's a reason why the church is there and anybody who's followed for a while knows why the church is on top of the hill where it's sitting and that's because it actually hides the access hole for the inner urban line where it will do its its uh, switching function on the back side of the backdrop. So there's actually a hole in the backdrop for the tracks to go through and the streetcars to go through for the inner urban line. I am going to put trees around that to disguise that hole. Um, even though it's on the back side of the church, those of us that are my height and taller, aka Rick the Tree, can look over the church and be able to see the hole in the backdrop. So I'm going to disguise it a little bit, at least on the facing side. On the back side, I'm going to do something to try and hide the light that would be coming from the hidden yards once I get this thing set up to where I'm going to have daytime and nighttime lighting on it. I don't need the light from the yards bleeding through that hole and coming on to the main layout. Anyway, um, because of where it sits, um, the sidewalks basically came to an end at the tracks where the school sits. All right, so how are you supposed to get to the church? <laughs> so I came up with an idea this afternoon, and I started messing with it. And back to the Fitchburg, um, there was a fellow by the name of Kevin that mentioned, hey, when you go to put down the boards in between the, the rails, take a piece of cardstock and glue them to the cardstock first. It'll make things a lot easier in the future. Okay, fair enough. So what I did is I cut up a piece of index card, a 3x5 index card, so I could get across the tracks. I just picked that up because I want to show you what I have done so far, which I think uh, turned out better than, well, expected. Uh, pardon me for a minute here while I pan the camera and zoom it in here a little bit because, okay, so there you have it. What I ended up doing was using the same uh, stone that I had used on the sides of the dam. Um, that's the walkway from the school to the church. Actually, my fingers are too big, so here you go. You got the sidewalk here, goes across, it'll go across the tracks, and then it's over here too. Now, I'm going to paint this gray to match the rest of the sidewalks. So they used gray stone for this instead of the tan stone or the sandstone that was used over on the dam wall. Give it a little different. Not only that, but it'll kind of match, well, I don't want it to match the church because the church is actually off screen. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want it to match the church and that's the same color that's on the dam. So I, I wanted this, I want this to be a little different. So what I've done up to this point was just that. And what I did is I've cut I'm hoping I remember how I put these down here. Alright, so there's that one. There is the one for between the rails. And then there's that one. And I'm going to lay toothpicks on those um, as a walkway over the tracks. Um, I think it's going to look bad. I already had the, the toothpicks laying down in there, but like I said, Kevin mentioned going ahead and putting something underneath of them to make it a little bit easier manipulating things. So that'll be the next step. Um, now granted, I do realize that I did bring these these cards out or this card stock out quite a ways and it's kind of covering the edge of the sidewalks I get it I understand um, I may end up either cutting the sidewalks back a little bit to have it match up with the uh, the uh, the toothpick 
the wood that's going to go over that, um, basically acting as a ramp. Um, I don't know yet. I haven't gotten that far. We'll see how it goes. The biggest thing is, is I wanted to make sure that I had something for it to sit on because when I actually cut the um, sidewalk back, I cut it back a little too far. And I'm kind of running out of pieces to go and put in there to be able to cover it back up. So, it is what it is. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with it. Now, while I'm standing here and we're discussing this, originally, originally the sidewalk was supposed to go straight across the front of the school and then come over this way and then go across the tracks and then angle in. I like this a lot better. I think this... This adds a little bit of definition. It adds a little bit of contrast, a little bit of, a little something extra to the scene. Um, so, I, like I said, I, I like the effect. I like how it turned out. We'll see how well the sidewalks, these sidewalks, match up with the sidewalks that I normally use. And, of course, I had a piece of the Coca-Cola box floating. Aha! Uh -huh. I found it. Because this is one thing I really didn't look at to see what, of course, this piece is a little bit goofed up, but, oh, the height isn't bad at all. Okay, perfect. So that's going to work. So the next step, like I said, is to go ahead and actually paint the cardstock very lightly, um, a black, so that it's not showing white through. And then after that, going ahead and gluing the toothpicks to it. And I'm using flat, these wonderful flat toothpicks. Um, now, they do have a bit of an angle to them, but that can be a, actually be a plus. So, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. But I think this little scene is starting to come together. And then once I'm done with this, then I'm going to start working my way south. So, it's basically going to be getting a hold of some more of the, which I've got plenty of, uh, the coat cases and cutting them out uh, to make the sidewalks, because there's a sidewalk on this side, there's a sidewalk on this side, because eventually this is going to be, goes into the backdrop and it, there's supposed to be a parking lot behind the school, so the parking lot is shared between the school and the, and the church. Um, but then down, we'll go down and we'll, we'll touch on you know, the, the, the Cape Cods that are down here that have obviously all been repainted. And then, of course, the sidewalk. I have to figure out what I'm going to do after I get past this Cape Cod as to whether um, I continue the sidewalk on or if I do something a little different down there. I don't know yet. Now, since we're here, we already talked about this uh, last week. And that's the fact that on the other side of this bridge, there is a, a piece of batten um, to kind of hide the fact that there's a gap back there. Uh, I may end up still running sidewalk down here to meet up with the sidewalks down next to the um, Cape Cod. And then run it over on the other side. So you'll have a pedestrian bridge along with the road bridge and the interurban bridge. I think it's going to be neat. And of course, down on this side, we've got the same thing. Now, the other thing I've got to do when I get down here is I have to figure out how I'm going to French in the roadway to the foam core here. And I've got an idea as to how I'm going to do that. And it's basically going to be cutting into the paper on the foam core and then just gluing the roadway to it, the roadway from the bridge. Um, I think that's going to look good. I think that'll work out fine. So that's that's where we're going this week with this. So uh, I'm going to stop here, get some stuff done, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, I'll admit I had one of those moments where, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, so I'm not going to film any of what I did. <laughs> Of course, if I would have filmed it, it would have gone 100% south, and it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> However, what we're, what we're looking at here is, uh, I, I tell you what, Kevin over at the Fitchburg 
Um, you know what? I'm going to get this right before I screw it up for the umpteenth time. Okay. <laughs> it's just the Fitchburg Railroad uh, on Facebook. Uh, and he mentioned taking an index card and painting it black, which you obviously can't see because it's behind the boards, but if you notice between this one here, there is a there is a bit of a gap and it's black, so you, it really doesn't matter. But this was an index card. And all I did was paint it black, waited for that to dry, and then I glued these toothpicks to it and then I trimmed it up a little bit because the it, it, I, I didn't have it well I had the index cards pretty much exact to what I wanted but I had to do a little bit of trimming and I tell you what that effect is absolutely insane now it's funny because I, I taken a picture and also posted it to our Sidetrack Sunday crew along with posting it to the Fitchburg uh, Railroad to show Kevin, you know, what was going on. <laughs> and of course, Rick mentioned, um, aren't you supposed to stain it before you glue it? Well, yeah, you probably should. Um, for a building, you definitely want to make sure that you stain the inside and outside because you want the you don't want the wood to warp you have to seal it um, in this case it's a walkway and to be perfectly honest if it warps when I stain it I'll just redo it and the next time I redo it I'll actually show how I did it <laughs> but you know sometimes you eat know, I, 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 I tell you sometimes you come across stuff or you mention something and somebody goes, hey, have you thought about doing it this way? And th th this is what happens. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and try and stain this uh, with some burnt umber to give it a brown color. And we'll see what happens. All right, Track Gang. Um, on to another piece of this project. Um... <laughs> I, I, to be honest, at this point, I mean, I went ahead and recorded some stuff over the weekend. It's now Wednesday, uh, and I don't even remember where I left off. I probably should have gone back and looked, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think if I haven't shown it, I will show it again, but I did, um, I used toothpicks on a index card across the interurban line from the school to the church, and it turned out really cool. And, of course, now it's stained and it looks even better. But we're on to something else. Um, a while back on the Dream Plan Build uh, video series that MRR did, um, there was a fellow that was showing how to do uh, streets and things of that nature. And, of course, he was using Styrene. I'm not using Styrene. I'm using Foam Core. Actually, he was using styrene on top of foam core. I don't know why you would do that, but what have you. Um, anyway, so I am kind of slightly taking a page out of his book, or off of that playbook, I guess for lack of a better term, and <clears throat> I decided to try something the other night. And what it was, was coming up with a better way to do the pin striping on the roads, you know, for uh, crosswalks and, and so on and so forth. Um, I thought I remembered him saying he used 8th inch. That's too wide for HL. Because that was the test piece that I came up with, with the yellow. Now, I granted, that's straight Mars black, um, which I'm obviously not using. That would be tar. Uh, most of my roads on this railroad are going to be concrete. Um, but the test was successful, I will say. Basically what it is is you lay down the yellow, and then you come back and you tape over top of it, and then you lay your street color over top of that, and then you come back and you peel up the tape. And it leaves you a nice straight 
wine. So, what I just got finished doing, and I doubt that this is going to, oh, it does show up, look at that. So I just got finished painting the center line yellow. Now, I did run into one problem, and that is the fact that, obviously, when I was laying all this stuff out, I put pencil marks all over the place, which is fine. The issue is, is on the yellow, the pencil mark is still showing through. Ah, however, I think what's going to be neat is once this dries, which it basically pretty much already has, but once it dries and I tape it off, when I peel the tape back off, you're going to see that black, that black line in between, or in, in the yellow line, which is going to make it look like it's divided, which for HO scale is a little bit of a stretch, but it is what it is. So I'm going to let this dry real good, and I've already gone back and I've actually cut painter's tape, at least a piece of it so far, to sixteenth of an inch. And what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll lay it down that center line. Now, there is one other spot that I'm going to have to deal with, and up here is where the lines divide to go over to the bridge. Um, originally, I thought about putting a jersey wall in between here. I may st I'm probably still going to end up doing that, but I'm also thinking maybe I'll put guardrail. But the other thought was, is well, I've already got the yellow paint out. I'm already painting this. Why don't I just paint that whole area? And I can always come back with the blue painter's tape before I start painting the gray and actually cross hatch it. And, or not cross hatch it, but by a diagonal line it and see what that looks like. Because, like I said, eventually I may end up putting a guardrail there, I may end up putting, you know, a center divider on there. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I will say this, and that was laying this sidewalk out was a pain. Um, not so much over on this section, but when I got over here to where it's going over to the bridge, this was a bit of a pain, but we'll see how it plays out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what it looks like. I've already had it up on the layout. I do need to fix this piece, though. It's too short to do what I was originally thinking about doing, which was having basically a pedestrian bridge beyond the bridge. Um, I'm still thinking that that's the way to go with that. Um, I do have to make some other marks on here before I start laying out like I did with Union Station. If you remember back, way back when now, when I was rebuilding it and I actually kind of did the scenery around it, um, I need to lay out where the grass is going to be or where the lawns are going to be. I need to get all that stuff over here uh, so I can kind of get that taken care of. Um, but other than that, um, like I said, we're going to let this, this yellow paint dry real good, and I'm going to come back and stripe it. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay down some dark gray, and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. So we'll be back. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you all are going to see this at the same time I am. So I went ahead and painted the road. Um... As you all saw last night, I painted yellow. I think you all saw that. Or at least I showed you what I tested. So, and this did not work as good as I was hoping. Unfortunately. It's kind of tearing. I may be able to touch it up, but we'll see. We'll see how bad it is. And if worst comes to worst. I'll just have to uh, man, that just really that just that just didn't stick at all. 
Now, I was hoping over here to actually have a crosswalk. And for whatever reason the paint is just it's stuck it's sticking to the tape, it's not sticking to the to the foam core, which is weird. I've never had that problem before. Like I said, I might be able to I might be able to fix it. Yeah, it's just it's peeling. Well, that didn't work. That sucks. It even pulled the whole thing up that I had done over here, too. I wonder if this is because it's a different style foam core. This has got a really smooth surface to it. I wonder if that's part of the problem. That really stinks. Because what I was hoping is not only did I do well the crosswalk up here, which I don't even know if it's going to show up on camera, but I tried to do a crosswalk up here. I also went ahead and tried to do around the outside edge a white line I think what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm just going to have to take the take this back off of here and redo it completely now for some reason the white line that I wanted around the edge isn't peel well no there it goes. I was gonna say it wasn't peeling the paint until I said something. Oh well. Oh, what is that we keep saying? Yeah, this is this is just no good. I don't know if this is showing up down here or not, but I can literally just peel the paint right back off this foam core. It's like it rubberized. Well, I was hoping to have something a little bit nicer, but, uh, well, that didn't work out. i got to figure out how I'm going to get the tape off of there, or the paint off of there. really interesting is the tape that I put up here with the paint it's not it's not peeling like that and this is for the driveways I don't know if I should have let this harden a little bit more or not I mean I'll, it was it, the paint's basically been down for a couple of hours. I mean, the yellow I painted last night and it peeled it right back off. I 
Yeah, I don't know what the deal is here. This is just weird. Oh well. I guess I'll have to figure something else out now. I mean, it, when I did this, when I did the test, this was with acrylic. I probably didn't have any of that on camera. Um, when I did this, it was with the acrylic. And this was latex. So maybe that's the difference. But the thing is, the yellow was done with with the um, with the acrylic. It's just weird. In some places it's stuck, and in other places it just started to peel. As soon as I started peeling the tape off. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, this, this isn't even usable. Well, it just goes along with the freaking week that I've had, I guess. Oh well. Uh, I'll have to see if I can't figure some way of getting that off of there and then redoing it. I guess. Unbelievable. Oh well. Back to the drawing board. Well, that's going to be it for this week anyway. Uh, so, you all know the deal. Wait for the eyeball. Green tracks ahead. Be safe. God bless. We'll catch you all next time. Um, before I forget, Sidetrack Sunday. This Sunday, my channel. Might be something a little bit interesting. We'll see what happens. Um, I might, I think I might actually have a set up over here, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, number one, number two, I've got an idea for what I'm going to, at least part of what I'm going to have, uh, on Sunday. So stay tuned, keep your eyes open for that, and we'll catch you all later. See ya.